recognizable riff if I ever heard one. Uh, and it, it, interestingly enough, the song was a, a request from the record company to come up with something, some kind of a hit single pre-Christmas in 1965. And in typical fashion, Lennon and McCartney got their heads together and produced a classic song. Uh, the song was conceived and the riff was conceived by Lennon um, with some help from McCartney in, in, in their sometimes collaborative fashion. Interestingly enough, uh, it was usually the case that the principal writer in the song sang lead, but in this case, Lennon wrote the song, uh, McCartney sang lead in the verses, uh, Lennon did sing lead in the choruses. Here's 1965, one of the most unforgettable riffs you'll ever hear, and the rest of the song too. Here's Day Tripper. All right, well, in uh, watching some video and checking out the proper chords for Day Tripper, I'm going to show you what they are, so we'll begin with the chords you're going to need. And the first chord you need is an E7. Now, you could play it down here. But I'm going to suggest that you play it up here, because that's where I saw John playing it, as the rhythm player in this song. And that means you're going to basically play a um, bar E chord on the with your bar, your four-finger bar in the seventh fret. Then you're going to turn it into a seventh chord. So instead of barring all three notes uh, in that A chord formation, you're just going to put your first finger, or your, pardon me, your third finger on the ninth fret, fourth string, and your pinky finger on the ninth fret, second string. So we got an E7. Then we're going to play an A7, and that's a standard A7 bar chord. That'll be down at the fifth fret bar, and then uh, just an A major chord, but convert it into a seventh chord by putting your pinky on the eighth fret of the second string. So you got the E7, and the A7. Okay. Then we've got an F sharp 7, and you can make this a major or a 7, it doesn't really matter because you're not really playing too much down there. I would maybe go with a seventh chord here. And that's just exactly the same as we played the A7, down three frets so that our bar is on the second fret. Okay, so we've got E7, A7, F sharp 7, A major. Exactly the same as the, as the A7 chord, but don't make it a 7 this time. Make it just a regular E formation chord here. So we're going to play A major, A flat major, D flat major. So that's just a nice transition there. We're going to go from A major, A flat major, D flat major. Okay, so just to review them all again, E7, A7, F sharp 7, A major, A flat, D flat, Those are the chords you need for Day Tripper. All right, let's talk about that opening uh, signature riff for Day Tripper, which is we're going to keep it nice and compact. We're going to play with the first, second, and third fingers on the second, third, and fourth frets, and open so some open strings in there as well. The riff starts on a low open E, the open E string, and that's in conjunction with what the rhythm's playing, which is E7 chord. So the riff starts on a low E note, open E string, and then moves through a progression and eventually ends an octave above that on the E on the fourth string, second fret. And here's what happens in between. So starting on the open low E string, open, Second finger on the third fret, 
third finger on the fourth fret. Then I'm going to bar across the second fret of the fifth and fourth strings. And I'm going to pick down on five, four, and then lift the finger up to play an open fourth string. So the first six notes again. Now to finish up. It's just kind of a little alternating thing there. We go from second fret of the fifth string to the fourth fret of the fourth string and back. And then an open D and an E. Those five notes. So there's 11 notes all together. Here they are again. That's the opening riff. The beauty of it is when he switches to the A chord, that A7 I told you about earlier, all we do is move everything down one string. And the pattern there is, uh, uh, as the, when the singing starts, we play it twice on the E. on the E, once on the A, and then once again on the E. And that gets us into She Was a Day Tripper. Okay, just want to take a moment to show you what the right hand's doing here. Kill two birds with one stone and show you what uh, the sequence of the courting is during the verses. And this isn't the real singing because I have a horrid cold, but bear with that a little bit. But um, here's what you need to do for verses. <laughs> So just getting that, uh, notice the strum pattern changes when we get to, it took me so long to find out that I found out. It becomes that as opposed to, uh, that more R&B feel there. Okay, that's what you need to know about the chord progression and what the right hand's doing strumming-wise. Okay, well this wonderful 12-bar middle to the song is fairly complex, but I'm going to try and give you a kind of a simplified version of it. It's 12 bars through the chord of B. Twelve bars like that all together. That's the bass is pounding the B note, and the B chord is playing through this entire sequence. And then the lead guitar, so what George was doing here, I'll show you um, how to make up those 12 bars. And the first bit of it is um, this. So it's 7th fret of the 6th string, which is the B note. And then my 2nd and 3rd fingers play the 5th and 6th frets of the A string. And I've got my, my index finger barring at the 4th fret, the 4th and 3rd strings, and they st that finger stays there. The others play around here, but that finger stays there, so... And I'm just playing around there off the 6th the, um, fret of the 3rd string and the 7th fret of the 4th string, along with that bar. And it plays 
plays through that three times, and that takes up six of your 12 bars. Okay, so just keep in mind that this is going to take some practice. Playing the riff on the seventh fret here with our fingers in these stationary positions, but using our third and fourth fingers on and off strings is much more difficult and intricate than playing the riff down here. So take some time and practice that several times. All right, well, the last six bars of that 12-bar middle section, uh, the first four of those bars are a little bit of lead work played by George here. So the first one hammers up from the 7th to the ninth fret using 1st and 3rd fingers on the 4th string. And then we're going to play. So we're going from the 7th uh, fret on the 3rd string to the ninth fret on the 4th string, back and forth. And then we're going to bend on the ninth fret of the 3rd string. And I'm just going to bend that up and then pick down on the 10th fret of the 2nd string. So the whole thing is, and I let that back down from the bend, I'm going to bend it up one half step, the second half of it is up here, so that's up on the uh, 12th fret. And I'm going from 12 to 10 and to 12. So just a simple little riff here. Remember when you bend, to use all your fingers to help bend that string. Don't just use the third finger. So putting the two together. Then the last two bars are just joining in with that harmony vocal as it builds. And then and back into the riff. All right, let's do that picture in picture we talked about. And, uh, big screen with uh, more of the lead work, and then small screen will we'll have the strumming and, uh, and rhythm work in it. Here we go. Just a couple of fine-tuning tips today, and the first is to pay attention to those different rhythms. Kind of a standard John Lennon thing versus the... Uh those rhythms really make the song in different spots. The second thing is if you want to squeal up that intro a little bit, have fun with it. Grip your pick really close to the end and you'll get more of a... To. If you like that little bit extra pizzazz in your intro, grip the pick nice and close to the tip. We'll see you next time on Song Mentor.